Hey guys, welcome back to Heavy Metal Horizons. And I want to talk about a piece of really great news that uh, was announced recently in aviation, which I think most people missed because there's usually not good news in aviation. So lately, the thing everybody's been talking about is the Air India uh, 787 crash. It's of course a very high profile accident and rightly so, a lot of people are focused on that. But right around the same time that happened, uh, a huge announcement was made, which is really good for aviation in a lot of different ways. And that is that the ban on civilian supersonic flight over land is being lifted after more than 50 years. This was originally enacted in 1973 and, you know, right around the time of the, the Concorde and the uh, extinct Boeing 2707. Uh, supersonic transports that were in development and just kind of just getting uh, literally off the ground. Supposedly everybody was so worried about sonic booms over land and over population that the FAA banned supersonic flight for civilian flights. Now of course this whole time there has been occasionally military flights, uh, supersonic flights over land and most of the time nobody even is aware that that is going on. Now a lot of this, you know, like I said, early to mid 70s, this was going on. And the reason for the ban officially was that it was going to, you know, the, the sonic booms were going to be a nuisance to people and livestock and, and this kind of stuff. Um, that being said, a lot of people felt that there was some political stuff behind it because the Concorde was not an American made plane. It was, you know, a French and British collaboration. And the Boeing 2707, which was going to be the American counterpart to the Concorde, ended up getting canceled because it was so expensive. Anyway, a lot of people back then felt that basically the U.S. government didn't want the business of supersonic transport going to the Concorde if an American company wasn't going to be competitive. So for that reason, they banned supersonic flight over the United States, which severely limited how much the Concorde could be used. And I'm not saying that that concept is right or wrong. I'm just saying, you know, th there was a lot of controversy around that decision back in the 70s. But that is all ancient history now. And fortunately, uh, because of some recent executive orders and, you know, changes in the uh, administration and so forth, they are lifting the ban on civilian supersonic flight over the United States. Now, what does this mean for us? Okay, well, first of all, there's a whole bunch of development that has been going on in supersonic transport, which has really kind of been waiting in the wings for this to happen. And a lot of this has to do with like NASA testing, where they're trying to make aircraft that either won't create an audible supersonic boom or at least a much reduced supersonic boom. And they've done some successful testing in that. So we might be looking forward to a whole new wave of commercial supersonic transport airliners in the future. But the thing that really fascinates me is that this actually affects general aviation in a really cool way because there are people that privately own supersonic capable aircraft. There's a few people that own, uh, you know, F-104 uh, Starfighters. There's a guy, you know, I'm in Los Angeles. There's a guy up in Tehachapi that owns a MiG-21. These are supersonic capable aircraft which have never been able to be flown to their full potential. Now with the ban lifted, they in theory will be able to. You will be able to, to file a flight plan and go to, you know, in excess of Mach 1, even Mach 2 in the case of some of those aircraft. This is going to open up entirely new possibilities for general aviation because as crazy as it sounds, you know, there are private owners of aircraft, privately owned aircraft that are supersonic capable. Now, they're still working out the details of how the regulations are going to change, but it's entirely possible that within this year, which is 2025, you will be able to get in your own aircraft. A private pilot will be able to get in their, their supersonic jet and fly supersonic to your destination in the United States. And I just love that idea. It seems far-fetched, but we're getting to the point now where there's no reason that you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, guys, this is just kind of a short video. 
I wanted to highlight this because so few people are talking about it, obviously because aviation generally is, you know, normally gets such bad press, that stuff always overshadows the good news. So anyway, let me know what you think about all this stuff down in the comments section below. Do you think it's totally unrealistic? Do you think eh, maybe a handful of people or flights will actually do this? Or do you think we're looking at a future where this will actually be commonplace? Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Okay guys, here at Heavy Metal Horizons, we do aviation, cars, and ham radio. If you like that stuff, please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.